Okay, so um, apparently this wisdom on enlightenment is very, 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 very important because it literally was cut off. Uh, I am on um, a live feed here through Facebook on my computer with a very, very high internet speed. So if it ever gets cut off in these kinds of conditions, 100% of the time it has to do with um, the wisdom that is uh, trying to be shared and being uh, uh, stifled, so to speak, by the negative energies that do not want this positive information out there. Uh, there are many that just came in just now, Jorge, Crane, Tone, uh, Molina, you, you maybe not understand, but I just started this live stream uh, a few minutes ago on a different uh, Facebook page and uh, uh, the negative energies that did not want the the power and significance of this wisdom out there cut this off so that's a very good example of how important enlightenment is so I'm gonna uh, just uh, chat for a few minutes while those who got knocked off are returning and then we'll pick up where we left off at um, I'll go ahead and repeat some of the things that I've already said for those that are just tuning in. So my name is Master Paul and I am not what <laughs> might be referred to enlightened, uh, but I have reached a certain layer of it, uh, one of the lower layers. And that's one of the unique things about this wisdom is there are many layers of enlightenment. And how do you discern if you've reached it and what layer you are at? We'll talk about that today. Uh, I have been blessed to train under multiple enlightened masters, not knowing that the first one I trained under was enlightened, but learning that a little bit later on when I was able to um, receive much higher information on that discernment. And uh, there are many different ways that one can reach enlightenment. There are many different levels of enlightenment, including uh, soul enlightenment, heart enlightenment, mind enlightenment. So there's quite a few different slices and pieces of information that are available out there. One of the reasons I'm bringing this up at this time specifically <clears throat> is because uh, Dr. and Master Zhigong Sha is doing uh, an actual event on enlightenment as well as the Tao science uh, in Honolulu, Hawaii, but he's offering it via webcast anywhere in the world. And uh, for those that are in opposite time zones, it really doesn't matter because it's recorded so you don't miss anything. And the reason I bring this up is because it's very, very rare that Master Shaw offers live events to the general public. Uh, for the last two years, he has not done that at all, with one small exception just to offer healing to people. But as far as teachings and wisdoms, he hasn't done anything in two years to the general public because his wisdom and teachings are so advanced that really only his advanced students can keep up with it. And so, without a doubt, um, it's a tremendous, beyond, beyond, beyond rare, tremendous opportunity to be with Master Shah. And Kristen Rojas, thank you Kristen, has posted the link uh, in her chat to, to look at registering for that. By Hopefully by the end of this live stream, you'll have a much greater comprehension of the value of that. So let's check in with those who have uh, stopped by to say hi today. Welcome Jorge, welcome Crane, uh, aloha to Jen, Tone, welcome, welcome Molina, uh, welcome Dana Victoria, uh, Maria, welcome aloha Dan, welcome Patricia, uh, aloha Kristen, and welcome uh, Salsan, welcome Rosetta. Uh, We've also, there was probably about 10 other people on the other live stream that haven't found this new one yet. Um, welcome, Nirma. So hopefully they will find it again. So let's go ahead and connect and we will uh, prepare for this wisdom and teachings today. Placing our hands in soul light, soul service hand position, which is a hand mudra position. Uh, why is this taught? What's the difference between a prayer position like this and the hand mudra position. Well, the left hand, which might be opposite in your computer screen, drops in front of the heart center, where the right hand remains. And ha this is a hand mudra, but so is this one. And the difference is that when we place the left hand in front of the heart center, it acts as a conduit to receive heaven's frequencies and blessings directly into our heart center. This is one of the wisdoms behind it. So let us close our eyes, and I will invite in the beings of light. 
Dear our beloved divine creator, all layers of divine Tao source, all of our mother and father Shurfus, heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, we love you, we honor you, respect you. We ask for your presence today to offer your guidance, your wisdom, and your blessings in whatever way is most aligned and most appropriate. We ask for your wisdom on the nature, power, and significance of enlightenment and why people should pay attention to the upcoming retreat with Master Shah. We ask for these blessings and guidance today as appropriate. We ask the song of love, peace, and harmony to please come, turn on in each and every one of us, offer blessings to align our hearts and souls. And we invite all souls and all universes to join with us at this time as we chant the song of love, peace, and harmony. So again, if you're new, you're not familiar with this mantra, this beautiful song, it is a blessing. Close your eyes and receive. If you are, I invite you to join in and offer uh, your blessings at this time. Let us begin. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula. La li lu la lu la ha li lu la lu la ha li lu la wo ai wo xin er ling wo ai zi la nan li rong ling rong I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get some of the drink here. Aloha and welcome Tracy, welcome Victor, welcome Pranjal, Aloha Joy, welcome Nurma, <coughs> welcome Carrie. Uh, if I missed your name, Maria Sobral, welcome, welcome Dinah, Aloha uh, Sausan, thank you for your presence, thank you for clicking on the share button so other people can also benefit from this wisdom. Today we're talking about the nature, power, and significance of enlightenment and what is enlightenment. So, uh, first, I want to preface this by saying the wisdom that I'm sharing is is mostly in it, uh, from uh, the wisdom that Dr. and Master Shah has brought to humanity. Uh, I had often pontificated, wondered, what is enlightenment? What does it look like? How do you get there? I'm guessing uh, many of you have had that same thought. You know, what is it? How do you get there? <clears throat> Welcome, Emmanuel. And the ability to reach enlightenment is not a one lifetime thing. It could potentially happen in one lifetime, but even if it did, it most likely would not happen at the highest level possible. So how can I say that with such consciousness if I'm not fully enlightened myself? <clears throat> it's based on what uh, Master Shah has taught, which is that there are three levels of enlightenment, and within those levels there are millions of layers. What are the three levels? They are soul enlightenment mind enlightenment, heart enlightenment. These three layers of enlightenment all have different, uh, three levels of enlightenment all have different layers within them. What does that mean? How can you have a layer within a level? Well, it's very simple actually. Um, within the, the soul level enlightenment, for example, there are layers, okay? Well, how does one reach soul enlightenment? Let's start there. Soul enlightenment happens when the soul is free of virtually all of the soul-based karma, soul-based negative 
um, thoughts, words, and actions towards others. And when a soul reaches a soul level of enlightenment, it starts at the first layer, sitting in the heart. In Master Shah's wisdom, there are uh, soul houses, which you might know as chakras. And uh, with his spiritual third eye, he can clearly see, and many people can if their third eye is open, where the soul actually sits in the body on its process of awakening. Uh, the soul is a golden light being. And when it reaches its first layer of enlightenment, it actually sits in the heart center, the heart chakra. When Master Shah received this guidance and wisdom, he asked heaven, he said, okay, approximately how many lifetimes of good service does it take heaven before a soul can move into sitting in the heart center? And heaven said it takes at least 500 lifetimes a very good high-level service why does it take service because service creates virtue virtue is good karma and virtue is what offsets spiritual debt so what inhibits a person from reaching layers of enlightenment is the amount of spiritual debt that they can incur by unpleasant thought words and actions you know harming others with our thoughts gossiping cheating lying stealing killing um, taking advantage of others. There are so many different ways in which we, we create uh, negative messages and negative energies upon, upon our record of all services that it inhibits us from reaching enlightenment. <clears throat> and so heaven told him it would take at least three to 500 lifetimes of positive uh, service just to bring the soul to where it's sitting in the heart center. So Master Shah then asked Kevin, he said, okay, uh, out of the 7 billion plus people in humanity, what percentage have actually reached the first level of soul enlightenment? And what he clearly heard was only about 15%, one five, 15%. And actually, if you stop and think about it, that's a pretty easy to understand statement because that would mean that 85% of humanity has not reached enlightenment. Now, your ego might be jumping in there and say, well, I'm enlightened. I am. Well, I'm not saying you're not, but let's take a look at what it means to be enlightened. A being who is enlightened has love in their heart. They have desire to serve at all times. They have zero agenda. When they have food or drink in their hand, they happily offer it to others first. They don't even think about themselves. When they are walking down the street and they see different people of different sizes, different colors, and different races, there is zero perception in their head of inequality. People that have enlightenment concept of enlightenment thoughts only desire to be of value and service to others. In all their thoughts, in their words, their words are very gently chosen. They, they, they purposely, consciously choose words that do not create any degree of resistance, any degree of, of anything except love. They're very much in control of their mind. Negative thoughts do not enter their mind. If they do, they're able to wash them away very quickly. Ask forgiveness. If you do not meet those criteria, it's highly unlikely you've already reached enlightenment. There is an exception to that, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So <clears throat> it's not an easy task. So when somebody is on the path to enlightenment, it is about the process of clearing out the negative mindsets, negative attitudes, negative beliefs, all of the greed, all of the, the selfish thoughts, and our thoughts, words, and actions. We have to be gentle and kind in all of these. So not only once, but a minimum of 500 lifetimes. And while we are doing that, we must consciously be of service to others through positive thoughts, words, and actions. That's why the monks sit on the mountaintop chanting mantras and thinking positive thoughts in service to others. This is why they do these things. And so there, there is a fast path which I'm trying to lean you towards, but I have to explain to you what most all of us uh, go through lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And if you don't believe in lifetimes, that's okay. No need to change your perspectives or beliefs. Certainly don't need to believe what I'm sharing. <clears throat> but do yourself a favor 
and allow this information to sit besides the other information you may have and see if at some point during this life you gather enough information where it helps you to make more uh, heads and tails of why you're here. Because you might discover that there's a value in it if it doesn't resonate with you now. And so one of the wisdoms that Master Shaw shares is that in order to, uh, to have 500 very good high-level service lifetimes, you probably have to live about 1,500 of them. Why? Because life is like a stock market. We do good things, next time we come in, we forget. We do good things, next time we come in, we make more mistakes. And we do good things, and so forth. And so, uh, you know, you've heard the story, two steps forward, one step back. It's kind of like that in the human experience. Because we don't always react and respond well to the opportunities that are brought into our life. What do I mean by that? Opportunities are life experiences that are there to assist us to be more pure, to clear negative spiritual debts. We could have a relationship come into our life that brings us very unpleasant experiences, but it could be because we have brought others unpleasant experiences. And so it comes into our life so that we can ask forgiveness, so that we can recognize our mistakes, we can clear that spiritual debt, and therefore move higher on the enlightenment probability scale. <clears throat> when we are aware of this, we do not backslide. We do not go two, forwards, two steps forward and one step backwards. But when we uh, are not paying attention, when we enter uh, a new life and we are lost in the oh, poor me uh, life cycle, then of course we, we do not do a good job of reaching those 500 very high quality service-oriented lifetimes. So it takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of lifetimes of good high-level quality service just to reach the first layer, the first level of soul enlightenment, which is where the soul sits in the heart. Okay, So not an easy thing to accomplish for the average Joe. So how then do we expedite this process? Well, there are many teachings out there. <clears throat> there are teachings in the Bible. There are teachings in the Quran. There are teachings in the scriptures. There are teachings in all the different belief systems around the world. You just, just go look for them. Not hard to find. They all teach the same things. Watch your thoughts. Watch your words. Watch your actions. But is there a faster way? The answer is yes, but I'm going to hold off on telling you that. I'm going to move to the next layer and level of understanding of enlightenment first. Heart enlightenment. Heart enlightenment is very, very difficult for many, many people. Why? Well, what is heart enlightenment first? Heart enlightenment is completely different than soul enlightenment. You can have your soul move up through your soul houses, move up in your body until your soul sits on top of your head. And that's fabulous. You've reached a very high level of soul enlightenment, which is a deep understanding of heaven and how heaven operates, working very closely with heaven. Uh, miracles are not a big deal for people that have reached that level of enlightenment. But that does not mean they have reached the highest layers yet. There is still heart enlightenment, and then there is also mind enlightenment. So what is heart enlightenment? <clears throat> heart enlightenment is the removal of all selfishness, all greed, all emotions other than love. There is no anger. There is zero fear. Zero. Zero fear. Zero worry. Imagine that. Not even an inkling of worry. No despair, no anxiety, no anger. None of that. When a person has reached heart enlightenment, they are literally in love with the source. There is nothing that could possibly enter their world that would bother them. Somebody could come and cut them with a knife, and they would look at that person with the greatest love and say, I'm so sorry for whatever I've done that has harmed you. Please forgive me. A person that has reached these layers of heart enlightenment, has zero agenda. They are literally a walking version of the source because they exude 
and radiate the greatest and the highest love. They know nothing else. Every person they see, regardless of how they might look to the human eye, they could be just the, the most destitute person, ugly and, and maybe uh, uh, in a horrible condition. And all they would see is this beautiful golden light being. A person that has an enlightened heart does not see what the external eye sees. They do not hear what the external ear hears. And they do not care what people say. They only see the soul. They only see the beauty. That's all they see. Are you there yet? I am like 1% there. I have 99% more to go. I'm, that's not even... I mean, that's just the absolute truth. To, re to get to heart enlightenment is one of the most difficult because we truly need to be aligned to the source where we trust everything. How can you be free of fear, anger? How can you be free of all those emotions? When you are fully aligned to the source, in love with the source, exuding the love of the source, where is there room for fear? Where is there room for anything other than pure love? There's simply no room for anything else. So that would be another layer of enlightenment. Most of us are not there. And you can start to see now why heaven told Master Shah that only 15% of humanity has reached even the first layer of enlightenment. Just look around you. How many people are in so much pain? People taking their own lives. People circling in their head every day, every day. What about this? What about that? When am I going to find my love? When am I going to, uh, how is the financial? Blah, 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 blah. And they're just circling in their mind. That's because they're so far from awakening. When we align to the divine's heart, to the divine soul, our problems can disappear. It really almost entirely boils down to trust. 100% trust and alignment to the source. And that just takes a process in most cases. There's a fast track. We're getting there. The next level of enlightenment is mind enlightenment. Welcome, Lydianne. Welcome, Sherry. Welcome also, Mark. Lahasu's power. Let's see. Welcome, everybody else. If whose name I've missed, Deborah, Sherry, Behi. Welcome, Santa Maria. Welcome, Tina Young, John, Sebin. Welcome, Emmanuel. I think I've got everybody. Could have missed you. Forgive me if I have. What is mind enlightenment? Mind enlightenment is the complete removal, non-existence of all things negative. Imagine where there is literally the impossibility of a negative thought. It just never enters the mind. There's no beliefs that are negative. Everything is just the best possible outcome. It's not even, a, a, you know how you come across people that, that they a put on that face, it's always the best positive outcome. It's a good face to put on, nothing wrong with it at all. But that is not even close to fully negative, uh, full mind enlightenment. Full mind enlightenment is literally your thoughts are source thoughts. Your thoughts are creator thoughts. Your thoughts are only of unconditional service to others. It is an impossibility for a negative thought, word, or action to come out of your mouth. Literally, how many negative thoughts come out of our mouth? How many negative words, excuse me, come out of our mouth? Um, complaining, okay? One of the number one negativities I, you know, I try to do as much as I can to stop complaining, but still it happens so much throughout the day. Just little things, you know, even if it's just the weight in the gas line. There's so many things <clears throat> that where negativity comes out of our mouth. But where does it happen before it comes out of our mouth? Up in our noggin, right? So it's a multitude of working it backwards. Most of us, we've already done a negative action before we realized it. So we got to back away from that and make sure that doesn't happen. Then we got to watch our words. And then once we can stop, stop our words at the mouth form so they don't come out, then we got to 
back up our thoughts so that we don't have negative thoughts. <clears throat> so where does the greed come from? Where does the negative thoughts, words, and actions come from? Where does the soul uh, mistakes come from? They all originate from yours and mine and our ancestors. Regardless of what belief system you work with, you and your ancestors have done mistakes. I and my ancestors have done mistakes. These mistakes are called messages on our records. The, what are the records? The records of our positive messages and our negative messages. What is meant by messages? Well, depends on the teaching you believe in, but there are, in the Christian teachings, the mess negative messages are sins. The positive messages are virtue. In the Buddhist teachings, the negative messages are bad karma. The positive messages are good karma. It just depends on what belief system you follow. They're all the same. The messages are a record of our services. What have we done with our thoughts, words, and actions in all the times? And so we come into this life trying to do the best, best, best that we can. We may have good parents, may have terrible parents. We may have good parents, but terrible belief systems. We may have terrible belief systems, uh, excuse me, uh, terrible parents, but a good belief system. Everything happens for a reason. When we come into this life, heaven and our heaven's team, they provide for us the exact set of conditions to assist you. You have a very personal plan. Your plan was mapped out before you ever came into existence in this life. It was mapped out perfectly and beautifully to assist you to reach enlightenment. But why aren't you there yet? Very simply, we get stuck in the mud of our messages. We get stuck in the mud of the negative thoughts, words, and actions that didn't end up in our mind accidentally. They ended up there because we brought negative thoughts, words, and actions upon others. We have difficulty being selfless because we were selfish in other times. And so people are selfish towards us. They don't give us what we would like. So how do we reverse that? We become selfless. We open our heart. We give love. We give smiles. We give positive messages and positive energies. When we do more and more of this, it wipes away the debts of the negative messages, starts to open our heart, starts to propel us on the pathway of heart enlightenment. Everything that stops us is our and our ancestors' faults. Everything that moves us forward is our faults. In other words, if we move forward in our positive path, that's also our fault. We did it on purpose. We purposely chose to change our way of bringing ourselves to life. So what's the fast track? How do we move through this as quickly as possible? My suggestion, if you do not have uh, uh, the, the solution I'm going to provide for you, uh, and the solution is very fleeting, very temporary, um, then you need to, to be conscious. You need to purposely, consciously put yourself on a pathway, find a, a, a teacher, and it doesn't have to be Master Shah, it doesn't have to be me, it can be any teacher that does not have an agenda, any teacher that has, has their only purpose is to assist you and serve you. Now, I want to clarify, like, you know, people come to me and I offer uh, private services, Sometimes I give it complimentary. They just can't put two nickels together. Many times I charge money for my services. You know, I paid for my education. You paid for your education. You don't expect to pay $100,000 for your education and then go work as a lawyer or a doctor and not get paid. So it's normal to pay somebody for their wisdom. Don't, be, uh, don't square your head around that. But find a good teacher somewhere that aligns to you and your, your, um, your heart and soul and if they're there to serve you and assist you, then by all means, stay with that teacher until you're not getting any more value out of that. And then find one that is. It's not unusual to go from different teacher to next teacher to next teacher. But make sure you follow your heart in doing so, not necessarily your mind. Your mind should not be the leader. It should be your heart. and Your soul is above your heart, of course. Um, so that's one of the first steps if you're not able to, to do the fast track. So what is the fast track? Well... As mentioned, uh, Dr. Master Shah has an enlightenment retreat coming up very quickly. Welcome, Michelle. Welcome, Candice. Uh, if you missed the first part, please go back and listen. Very, very important. 
um, this retreat, which if you look on the post, Kristen has posted it in her chats, um, and you can go to drsha.com and enroll in it as well. It starts in two weeks. Now, I went to an, my very first enlightenment retreat uh, when Master Shaw came to Hawaii about 10 years ago. I went to an event. He was doing a, uh, a one-day event here in uh, locally in Oahu. But the enlightenment retreat was a week-long event on the big island, a whole different island. And so uh, I was at that time training under an enlightened master. Her name was Master Chinyan, a female enlightened master. And she was truly enlightened. She was also a miracle healer. Uh, I witnessed quite a few miracle healings through this master. The only dilemma I had under working with this master was that um, she was unable to give me brain food. I needed to have the wisdoms. I, I, I had witnessed things that were fabulous to witness. Uh, and she had helped many people, and that was wonderful to witness. But I wasn't understanding why. I wasn't understanding anything that would move me forward on my enlightenment path. So this this guy at that time, I say this guy, but this being of light, Master Shock, came to Oahu about 10 years ago. And I saw him uh, on stage doing miracle healing, which I had seen before, so it wasn't shocking. But I wasn't really understanding how it was working, because the previous enlightened master I was working with, um, it took her about... Um, about a month or more to create the miracles uh, through a certain process. Whereas I was witnessing on the stage in 10, 15 minutes, the same thing happening. So that was intriguing to me. Then I picked up his book and, I, and it was reaching into my soul and my heart was dancing with happiness because the wisdom was the brain food I was looking for. And my soul knew it. It was dancing with happiness. And he said, I'm calling everybody to my enlightenment retreat on the big island next week. And it's only this much, you know, come come and pay. And it was like, I don't know, $500. Uh, like, what, $70 a day? That's pretty cheap. But you had to get the hotel room and all that. So it basically would break my bank to go. But I was so intrigued, I went anyway. And uh, I had no clue what enlightenment was at that time. Uh, and so I went to this retreat, and I really had that in the forefront. What is this enlightenment thing? You know, who is this guy who thinks he can teach me about enlightenment? No, no, no. You know, I really had this whole crossed arm thing going on. Um, and what I came to understand uh, during this initial retreat, uh, it was the same information I'm sharing with you. Now, well, the next thing that happened was beyond, beyond, beyond extraordinary. But I'm going to share with you uh, a very important part, whether you understand it, all I can do is share it. If you can't understand it, maybe you have to, to go through life a little bit more. But I'll share it with you anyway. In all time, Creator has brought to humanity messenger after messenger after messenger. Right now on Earth, there are probably 40 or 50 very high level messengers. We're talking Jesus level messengers that we don't know about. Even that will shake a lot of people's brains. Oh, okay, time to turn off this live stream. But just because you don't know about it doesn't mean God doesn't care about all the people in Africa or all the people in Zimbabwe or all the people down there in South America. They could be needing their own messenger, and they could get one that only speaks their language. But it could be a very, very high-level spiritual being coming from the highest layers of heaven that came for that group of individuals in that region of the world. Don't square your head. Too many of us square our heads. We only follow specific belief systems. And so the point is that heaven sends very high-level messengers all the time. So first, to get a good grip on that understanding. Heaven loves us. Heaven wants all of us to reach enlightenment. Heaven wants us to move away from negativity and towards positivity. And it doesn't, you know, all the people that live in that remote region of South Africa or South America or, or, or Antarctica or the Eskimos or whatever, wherever they live, they could be, just because they don't have access to a mainstream belief system doesn't mean they don't deserve enlightenment, does it? So don't square your head. Heaven sends many, many, many high-level enlightened beings. One of those, from my belief system, my perspective, my understanding, is this man named Master Shah. What I've come to understand, having worked under three enlightened beings, is that they all have different ways of reaching enlightenment, and they all have different power 
that heaven has literally transmitted to them. Heaven literally can transmit power to anybody that they choose to if that individual is completing their task. Why does a high level being come to earth? They come to complete their task. That task is to uplift humanity. So if they are doing their job well, then heaven gives them power. Some of them, they give the power of heart wisdom. Who's a good example of that? Heart wisdom. The Dalai Lama, right? He carries such extraordinary heart wisdom. And so heaven keeps giving Dalai Lama higher levels of heart wisdom. Dalai Lama keeps sharing. Other uh, beings of light receive different levels of power, different kinds of power. Master Shah receives authorities to transmit heaven's virtue. Understand, what is heaven's virtue? Heaven's virtue is heaven's positive energy, heaven's uh, money, if you will. In heaven, you, I, and everybody, every human being, has a bank account. That bank account is filled with our good services, our virtue, and our bad services, our bad karma, right? Our, our negative debts. Well, what is virtue? Virtue is good karma. If you have enough good karma, does it wash away your debts? The answer is yes. Yes, yes, and yes again. So Master Shah, his powers and authorities, because he is serving humanity, is to deliver huge amounts of virtue into our individual Akashic records. I learned this for the first time when I was at an enlightenment retreat with Master Shah uh, 10 years ago, and I didn't really grasp it the way I'm able to easily explain it to you now, but that's exactly what happened. Now what happens when the, uh, the power is transmitted to move from heaven's virtue bank, heaven's bank account in heaven of unlimited positive uh, energies, unlimited positive virtue, into your Akash record, into your bank account in heaven. Well, instantly, your Akash record is opened, and all of the errors that you have made are revealed. Massive amounts of virtue are poured onto your bank account in heaven. When that happens, massive amounts of negative energies, old messages, debts, spiritual debts, mistakes you and I have made, mistakes that you and your ancestors made, are lifted and they're washed away from the record. What does that mean for your now? What does that mean for your future? That means dramatic less suffering in your future lives. Dramatic, not little, a lot less suffering in your future. Because if you do not get massive amounts of your spiritual debt washed away, how are you going to move forward? Why do you think there's any suffering in your life? It's your spiritual debts. They come to you to remind you. I refer to them as opportunities. Anytime you have a suffering in your life, it's an opportunity to wash through it, ask forgiveness, move beyond it, and move into the light. But everybody sits there and they, they circle in their suffering again and again and again. So when people receive uh, these enlightenment orders, that doesn't mean all of a sudden the light bulbs come on and you hear the angelic voices, oh, and you're enlightened and you're done. And then you go off to heaven and you never need to come back. No. I hope I'm clear on that. That does not mean that. It means you have saved the amount of lifetimes of virtue offered. When Master Shah was delivering this, these virtue blessings, see, ask heaven. How much did people receive? How can they tabulate it in their head so that they comprehend the value of what they received? Because, you know, you and I, I would like to know, well, what did I receive? I didn't feel anything, right? If, you're, if your spiritual channels are not open, if your energy systems are not open, if your chakras are blocked, you're not going to feel a thing. If your spiritual channels are open, you'll see the Akasha figure open up. You'll see the virtue pour into your soul. You'll see your soul become very fat and happy, like a big, fat, happy Buddha sitting in your body. That's what happens when you get that amount of virtue. So Master Shah ask heaven, can you please give me a measurement so the human mind can understand what they receive? And heaven told him, think of it like X amount of lifetimes of you being perfect, 
chanting six hours a day to serve humanity on a mountaintop nothing in your heart but pure service six hours a day for 60 years and let's call that one lifetime of service when I received the enlightenment blessing 10 years ago what was being offered was 500 lifetimes of service worth of virtue as if I had sit on a mountain 500 lifetimes chanting unconditioned to serve human beings 500 lifetimes you want to do that does that sound like something you wanted to go do most of us do not want to do that but that's how heaven delivered the information to him about how much virtue is needed instantly uh, my soul which was sitting in the lower part of the body jumped up to the heart center Boom, right there since that time 10 years ago I have received multiple enlightenment blessings again why because more virtue moves it higher 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 your soul wants to go higher 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 more virtue washes away more of the blockages on the Akashic record and one of the things that has happened is Master Shah as he has this is 10 years ago as he has continued to serve humanity as he has continued to bless human beings he has uh, received higher ability to deliver virtue higher amounts of virtue so this calling to you this wisdom today is to assist you you must ask the question why does heaven send so many messengers to humanity what is their agenda what is their purpose the simple version of that is they're trying to raise the light they're trying to elevate human beings into higher layers of light the simple answer it's the truth when a being like a master Shah has been given this specific authority to deliver heaven's virtue to a human being what's the end result we have more light if you and I go to a retreat like this and we receive this enlightenment blessing literally we are a lighter body walking around on earth and since we are a collective if we represented seven billion cells in a, in a body or seven billion humans but if we were seven billion cells and all of these cells let's say one tenth of them become a billion times brighter wouldn't that positively impact the other cells in the body you get it that's why heaven sends these kinds of messengers to always make all the cells in the body lighter 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 which positively impacts the other cells I guess it's an analogy I hope you can understand okay so in wrapping this up in conclusion to attend a Master Shah Enlightenment Retreat is the biggest blessing in this life that I can recommend to you for your soul. Because your soul wants more than anything to reach the heart of the Divine. And the thing that most keeps it from going there is the record of spiritual debts. The record of services where mistakes have been made in previous times you and I will continue through all the remainder of our lifetimes to purify to become greater layers of love and light to stop making the mistakes we've made and start doing better things but it doesn't have to be ugly and miserable along that path it can be much more fun if you choose please register for the soul enlightenment Tao science retreat I'm gonna ask Kristen again to post it maybe she's already posted it and pushed it to the top I don't know but uh, look under Kristen Rojas chat and you will see the link for going to this retreat you can watch it on webcast uh, anywhere in the world and it is recorded okay so uh, I hope uh, you understand this if you came in anywhere in the last you know half hour or so you don't have enough information 
Go back to the beginning and watch. Okay? There is so much wisdom that has been shared. I cannot emphasize enough to go back. Even if you watch from the beginning, watch it again so that you truly understand the value of this. This is probably the single most priceless thing that can be offered. Uh, Master Shah said through all of his retreats, Yes, I can do blessings to, to remove your pain. Yes, I can do, at that time he called it karma cleansing. He doesn't call it that anymore. He said, but the most important thing you can do for your entire journey is soul enlightenment. More important than any of your suffering. You could be suffering of cancer. You could be suffering of the worst health malady on the planet. And he would still tell you, this is more important. Why? Because it affects all your lifetimes it elevates your soul and you're going to have a happier life overall no miracles you're not doesn't mean your problems are all going to go away it doesn't mean you're going to go up to heaven and never come back here no it doesn't mean that don't square your head you got wrong thinking already if you think that you will still have problems you will still have health issues you will still have stuff happening in your life but they will definitely be less and you'll have a much higher awareness of how to deal with them. Because when the blockages are cleared and your soul is elevated, heaven's wisdom is much easier to come in. Your responses and reactions are much wiser to what enters your life. You'll be able to handle life much, much better. And all your future lifetimes will be less cluttered and a much easier possibility of elevating on your spiritual journey. Okay? I hope that's crystal clear. So my name is Master Paul. I'm very grateful to be connecting with you today. I thank my beloved spiritual teacher and father, Master Shah, for all the wisdom he has brought to humanity, for his generous heart to serve you. Uh, I recommend that you enroll in this retreat if you can. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can uh, uh, Facebook message me afterwards. So love you, love you, love you. I call you to my Sunday live stream at 6 p.m. where I'll be chanting Love, peace, and harmony to serve those with the condition of cancer. Uh, and that's 6 p.m. Hawaii time, okay? And uh, so you can go into the Google and say, you know, what is that, my time? Uh, I will see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.